I'm here with Edie Kelly. She's a woman behind Rockefeller Center in New York City, and her job is to oversee Rockefeller Center at a time when big cities like New York and districts like Midtown are struggling. Um, so she needs to make her slice of Midtown a destination again. Uh, E.B., great to speak with you. As a managing director of Tishman Spire, which owns Rockefeller Center, you are a landlord. So tell me, give me the 30-second elevator pitch about how you think about your mission and your purpose when it comes to reviving this property. Sure, and so good to be with you. Uh, you know, I used to say pre-COVID that my job here was to compete with other office buildings uh, around the city. Now my job is to compete with your couch. I need to give you a reason to get off your butt and come here, a place that is dynamic and engaging, that provides you with moments of surprise. You never know what to expect and to make it a distinctively engaging place to work, to eat, to visit, to shop. That's my job. Okay, so you've got a lot of new things planned. Um, right now, the space is a bit of a construction zone, um, but you've got plans for the fall and for the winter. What are you spending the bulk of your time thinking about, working on, brainstorming around, solving? What we spend most of our time here at Rockefeller Center doing right now in, in the spring of, of 2021 is making sure that we are doing the things and making the physical changes to this place to make it a great destination for folks to come back to the office and to make sure that we continue to make it relevant and engaging for New Yorkers. So that's everything from the construction that's going on around the rink to make the rink even more open and a great place to come and skate, but also get a cup of coffee, to interesting art installations. We just opened last week um, the first ever solo artist takeover of the entirety of Rockefeller Center campus, the artist Sanford Biggers. And it's really important now, more so than ever, that we do that to give New Yorkers a reason to come here, to come back, to be able to have experiences with one another. It's something that we're uniquely able to do here, right here in the center, heart of the heart, center of New York. Um, and that's our, that's our job, to make sure that this place introduces you to new things and to take advantage of this moment in New York to really deliver for New Yorkers. And that's part of what you're talking about, the unexpected delights, the things that'll surprise you. Of course, people also go to Rockefeller Center to go shopping. Um, I wanna hear a little bit about the mix of tenants you have right now. Obviously, um, old standbys like J. Crew are there. You've got a uh, specialty retail like the Lego store, for instance. Who are your anchor tenants right now? And how much has that changed or how will that have changed uh, compared to pre-COVID times? Sure, so, you know, I, I think that the, the, joy of a campus like Rockefeller Center that both has Fifth Avenue retail along with the concourse that connects all of our buildings underground is that we have a real range. And so Lego, just as you mentioned, which previously had a great store in the Channel Gardens, is actually now opening their flagship right on the corner of 51st Street and Fifth Avenue, an even bigger, more experiential store. Um, and that will really be um, a capstone to a whole host of like great kids retail that we have here at the center. We have FAO Schwartz, their new flagship is here, and Nintendo. So that's a whole collection of great shops that we have here. Um, but we've also, thinking about sort of the, the street level experience, in the course of the last year, really sought to bring in some new energy, um, some new brands that you might not otherwise expect to find at Rockefeller Center. So we launched a program called Capsule, where we built out beautiful boxes and then invited retailers who might never have considered being able to come to Rockefeller Center. So for example, we have um, a retailer, Jill Lindsay, who has a terrific beauty and wellness shop in Fort Greene in Brooklyn that now opened here at the center um, and is, is just, it's a terrific addition to the mix. And the capsule program is to enable those brands to come and to do it on a shorter term basis. Maybe it's three right. months, six months, a year to really test it out. Um, but we've also done sort of even more sort of experimental and try it out new uh, approaches. So for example, last year at the holidays, we had a, um, a store that was available to us and we said, hey, called up Missy Robbins, who's a great friend of the center and said, you've got a really interesting concept, MP specialties, your you know, prepared pastas and sauces and grab and go, come here and let's do that for a couple months at, at the center, which was great. It allowed Missy to make sure that her staff kept working at this very uncertain time um, and provided a great little um, new amenity and um, retail experience to the, to the center. That's at street level. We're doing lots and lots of exciting food options um, in the concourse as well. And so when you, you know, talking about what I think the 
the anchors will be, I think certainly food and beverage will be a really anchor part of um, the overall Rock Center retail experience. Food has always been a draw. There's no question about that, but it feels like it's even more so now. What do you think it is about the past year that has made food even more important than it used to be as, as a point of gathering? You know, I think that COVID has really reinforced um, in so many ways that food, the community that food provides, both the physical experience of being together with one another, but the the universe of people who are employed and part of the, the food ecosystem, that it's really integral to the fabric of New York. I think you know a city, you know New York by its food. And uh, I think what we have always felt at Rockefeller Center, but even more so over the course of the last year, is that our job is to provide a range of really interesting food experiences here that showcase the best of New York. So that's everything from Frenchette, a James Beard award-winning restaurant, opening their next location here at Rockefeller Center, or the restaurateur Ignacio Matos coming here this summer. Great restaurants where you'll have a beautiful, um, you know, terrific experience. And then the Queen's Night Market, right? A beloved New York institution that had a home um, out in Flushing Meadows um, that now is here at the center where you can get an affordable lunch option and try out a whole range of different cuisines from, you know, whole different places around the world. So I think our job is to is to find those great New York partners, to bring them here, and to give them a platform to be able to amplify their voice uh, and be able to have that offering get to an even wider range than it might have been otherwise. I totally agree, and I, I feel like food is one of those things that um, every city does differently. I mean, you can go to any city and honestly go find a Lego store and buy some Lego pack, but you can't get certain foods uh, anywhere else but New York. So to, to highlight that is such a draw. You mentioned the Queen's uh, Night Market that'll be uh, in Rockefeller Center. That obviously will use up a lot of outdoor space. Can you explain how you're uh, rethinking and leveraging your existing outdoor space and creating some new outdoor space as well? Absolutely. So, you know, we have always benefited here from being what I like to say is sort of the original urban campus, right? We're not just a building or a collection of buildings. We are a place that is interconnected by the public spaces with the rink, right? The most iconic public space in all of New York, right in the middle of it. But I think what COVID has really shown us and, and all New Yorkers, but a lesson that we've absolutely learned um, is that New Yorkers are resilient. They can bundle up, they can enjoy programming, eating, being together outside all year round. And so what we've been doing is thinking about our public spaces, our plazas, our streets, the areas in and around our buildings as places for programming. And it's everything from being able to have incredible works of art, like the Sanford Biggers piece that we have you know, in the uh, in the Channel Gardens, all the way to people playing cornhole in Center Plaza in the middle of the summer. So it should be our job should be to provide um, places for people to connect, to come together, to have a cup of coffee, to get a, you know, we had other half brewery, a beloved Gowanus um, uh, beer company that had a truck here last summer. And folks, you know, would never have expected to have that here at Rockefeller Center. But, you know, all, all we did was say, hey, this is a great public space. Let's put a truck here. Let's put out some chairs and tables and let's invite the world to come and check it out. So I think that's something that we have done, but we'll do even, even more of more year round um, to encourage people to come together and to connect um, outside. And I remember you're saying that you're also building a park on top of uh, Radio City Music Hall, something that NBC wants to use as part of their filming. I mean, that's another big draw and another big um, part of what you're working with at Rockefeller Center. Um, Tina Fey's 30 Rock many years ago, and of course, SNL, they're all situated in Rockefeller Center. People all over the world know about this place and feel like they know the people who work on that campus. How much is Rockefeller Center a set for TV shows? <laughs> Well, you know, I think that's a um, uh, th that's a great uh, that's a great question. Certainly, you know, NBC being here filming 365 days a year and sending out you know, Rockefeller Center as the image of New York um, is certainly you know Rockefeller Center has become synonymous with New York as a function of that. It's not just NBC. You know, we have shows and movies that are filming here constantly, um, and I think you know this place is is so iconic, it is so synonymous with New York that um, we have lots and lots of inquiries and uh, you know, 
photo shoots from top of the rock, our observation deck at the top of 30 Rock, um, to the park, just as you mentioned, Radio Park, which we're building on the roof of Radio City Music Hall. So um, I like to think that you know, what we're delivering here with both the iconic location, but also the experiences and the people, if you want to see what New York looks like, you come here. And so that's why a whole lot of folks want to come and film and shoot here. And who knows, you might run into Seth Meyers at lunchtime while you're doing that as well. Um, is it more important, do you think, to win over New Yorkers to Rockefeller Center or to win over out-of-towners? You know, think... I think that visitors to New York want to see New Yorkers. And so our, um, our driving mission here is to make sure that this place continues to be beloved and a New York staple for New Yorkers first and foremost. I think that Rockefeller Center is a special place in New Yorkers' hearts and our job is to continue to deliver on that emotional connection and also to surprise them to say, hey, I never would have expected to find, I don't know, Rough Trade, the Williamsburg record shop that just closed operations and is now coming to Rockefeller Center. Wow, that's a great New York get. And they came to Rockefeller Center because we said, hey, we wanna have interesting experiences for New Yorkers. And then of course, out of town visitors, domestic visitors, international travelers, I think they wanna come to see where the New Yorkers are. Um, and so that's, that's what we are focused on, making this a great place for New Yorkers, a place for them to rediscover, to be surprised, to be excited by what they can find here, and certainly in so doing, welcome the visitors. And maybe they'll tweet about it or post it on Instagram, and that'll get more views and get more people into it as well and go viral. Um, what space in Midtown or New York City do you see as competition? Who are you trying to lure people over from? Or do you see um, Rockefeller Center as complementary to other parts of town? You're kind of the, the yin to Times Square's yang. You know, I, I think that we don't look at a particular other location in New York and say that's our competition. Um, you know, I think that we look at um, the remarkable development of the five boroughs of New York over the course of the last decade, and the fact that you might find the breast restaurant in New York in Queens, you might find it in Bushwick, you might find it in Jersey City across the river. And our job is to make sure that we have great restaurants that compete with that. So you might also say, I've got a great office building that's in Midtown South, in downtown, across the river in, in Brooklyn. I think there are, um, the, there are so many interesting and exciting things that are going on as more and more of the city um, has, uh, is, is expanding and there's new um, development and new activity in different neighborhoods that our job, look, we are central, right? We are right here in the heart. We're so close to Grand Central, so close to Penn Station. That's never changing. Um, but what is changing is the draw of the exciting things that are going on um, all around the city. And so to make sure that we stay uh, in, in keeping with that and stay current with that. Okay, final question to you, E.B. What do you look to as a best practice? What cities or places outside of New York inspire you in terms of, think, in terms of influencing how you think about Rockefeller Center and improving what you offer? You know, I, I think I'd I'd answer that question in in two ways. The first is so you know at Rockefeller Center we are right now in the middle of a real wholesale reimagining of our concourse, and the concourse is both you know sort of the spine of the center. It connects all of the office buildings. It provides great access to uh, the subway and access to the rink. But it's it's a place that perhaps folks might think about as well. That's where I'll go and grab a sandwich, but that's not, that not, there's not much more for me there. Our view is that the concourse and this incredible underground world can really be a destination in its own right. So I think about a city like Tokyo, where you are just as likely to find an incredible restaurant at street level as you are to find it hidden away, tucked in a subway station underground where you need to know how to get in to, to get the access point. And so the fact that we have this incredible underground city um, that can really benefit from 24-hour activity. I mean, think about the fact that, you know, uh, 20 Saturdays a year, Saturday Night Live is filming upstairs, and those guys don't wrap until, goodness, the middle of the night. That that should be something where you can then come downstairs and go to a great 
hidden bar, a restaurant that's still um, serving great meals. Um, so I think that a place like Tokyo, where you have that vibrancy and that life, but that happens not just at street level, but in unexpected locations, I think that is a real inspiration for us and what we're doing in the concourse. I think the other piece is, you know, I, I think we get great sort of inspiration in looking at dynamic campuses for um, you know, companies like a Facebook or a Google that are really thinking about the, the experience of their people and making sure that the place that they come to work every day is something that's not just that enables them to work, but that engenders pride. Because I think at the end of the day, our job is to make sure that people who come to work here at Rockefeller Center every day feel tremendous pride of place. It's a place they can't wait to show their friends and family. How lucky am I that I get to work in the place where Saturday Night Live films, there's ice skating in the rink, and there's great food downstairs. And that sense of excitement and ownership of this place is what we want to convey um, to all the people who come to work here every day.